Okay, today on the bench we have a, well, it's kind of a rare radio. This is a SBE Keycom 1000. So it's in partially disassembled because I'm actually getting ready to put it back together. Um, I've replaced all the electrolytic capacitors. Um, had several segments that were either dim or out. And uh, once I got the, the cap job done, got it turned on and everything, also found that it had no modulation. So um, this thing was a little bit of a bear. <laughs> the segments, that was a... It had, like I say, some missing segments, and some of them were dim. Um, I replaced both of these seven segment displays. Actually, here's all the old parts. So, pull out the everything it needed there. So, both of these, these are the original uh, seven segment displays. Those were replaced. That brought all of the dim ones back and most of the missing segments, but it still had some other ones that were missing. And we had this little guy. So, this is a uh, basically an IC, or a, a seven-segment driver, basically. It's a BCD driver. Um, and this is a, it's a kind of an oddball one. This is a CD4511, which is common. But it's a B, what is it, 4511BCN. I don't know if we can get that to focus on that or not. Yeah, it's not going to focus on that. <laughs> but it is. It's a CD4511 BCN. Now, I have boatloads of 4511s. It's a very common IC. But uh, I tried BCs, uh, BEs, BTs. I had some substitutes from NTE, Sylvania. I think, uh, God, I had some from another company. None of them would work. You'd stick them in, and yeah, the display just was batshit. I mean, liter quite literally just went batshit crazy. Feature, it's almost like it was back feeding into the the, uh, the microprocessor in this. Not that it's very micro, it's actually a rather large one in this. Um, but, uh, so I actually had to track down some exact ones. The CD4511 BCNs. Um, now I've run into that before. Occasionally you'll get a, a, a circuit that it only will take the exact one that was used in that circuit. You try anything else and you try substitutes and it won't work. Well, this was one of those radios. <laughs> so that wasn't replaced. All the segments work now. Uh, like I say, I got was doing the alignment, got to the transmit portion. Ah, no, well, I wouldn't say it had no modulation, but it was uh, with a very powerful power mic turned up the whole way. Yeah, you'd get maybe 5% mo you know, <laughs> modulation depth. It was really, really low. So it still had a problem on the... Now this has a... Because uh, SBE, and they put it installed them in a lot of their radios, and they actually work really well. They're a nice little circuit. They have a speech compressor board in them. Actually, this, this is actually the one out of this radio. Now I, have at some point in time, got a bunch of these in a lot. Um, don't know why somebody removed them. Like I say, I actually like them. I think they work really well. But I have a bunch of spares. I had rebuilt all of the spares, so I know they all work. So it was just faster, you know, for expediency, just because there's two coax cables. There's an in and out, a ground, and a power. That's another thing that's nice about these. They're kind of universal. You could honestly install this in any radio. Audio in, audio out, positive and negative. That's all there is. All the controls are on here. The gain and the compression levels controls are right here. So I just stuck a replacement in. Works fine. So I just need to, as I throw that across the radio, um, I just need to uh, tear into this a little bit more and diagnose exactly what's wrong with it. Um, could be a bad IC. Now this uses a Pesley, uh, what the hell is the part number? SL1626C. Um, that's no longer made. I know a lot of people say, oh, yeah, you can't find them or, you know, because I've suggested to people, just copy this circuit. It's actually a good little circuit. Well, they're not made anymore. Well, actually, they are. The Chinese. <laughs> they're great. When something goes out of production from the, and the original manufacturers, the Chinese are great at reproducing stuff. And their quality is getting really good, actually, on a lot of stuff. You have to watch it. But there's, but uh, So I have got actually have a boatload of these. I think I ordered like 100 of them when I found, found they were starting to make uh, I guess they made them in a limited run. I bought a hundred of them. But, the, you know, it's probably either that. Um, I do notice that this one uh, poly dip cap here has got that kind of what I call like the fungus that grows on it. And the epoxy dip, is. it looks, when they start to get that look, it's usually not long before they split open. So, I mean, it could be as simple as that's starting to short out. But, uh, yeah, I'll get that diagnosed at a later time and 
toss that back in a drawer with the rest of them. So I'll uh, stop the video here. Let me get it put back together, get it cleaned up, get all the knobs put back on it, um, get it working. Because this is, uh, and I'm sure back in the day, this thing was probably one of the most expensive AM radios. It may have been the most expensive AM radio, mobile radio at the time. Uh, just because it has that scan feature, notice there's no channel selector on this thing. It has a keypad. It has memories. It can scan those memories. It can scan all 40 channels. So yeah, it's got some neat features you just didn't find in other radios. But you know that was a, those were high-end options. <laughs> you know, as as simple as the microprocessor is in this thing today. You know, in its day, this was a, you know, cutting-edge radio pretty much. So. Uh, yeah, it's. I can't even imagine. I'd have to do a little bit of research to find out how much these cost, but I'm sure they were buku expensive. You know, by today's standards, it wouldn't surprise me if this thing cost, you know, adjusted for inflation, if this radio cost well over a thousand dollars, probably, because I'm sure it was. It was just one of those ones. Even back then, when this radio was being made, people would have looked at the price and just gone, "Oh, well, oh, maybe I don't need that." <laughs> so you know, this this was a luxury radio if you were an AM operator. So I'll get her back together and uh, we'll get her fired up so you can uh, see some of those features. Okay, so I just really quick uh, entered uh, three channels into memory, 12, 17, and 19. And you can see it's sitting there scanning its little heart off now. Um, like I said, you can store up to 10 channels in this. Um, it requires two power cords attached to this or a power cord it just has a cord back here I have hooked up currently, but there's a little spring-loaded jack I'll show. That needs constant power to it. Um, what that does is that way when you turn the radio off, it, do it doesn't lose memory. So it needs power applied to it all the time to retain its memory. Um, and you can also do, uh, you know, just scan the normal uh, CB band. Um, I think that one was... Oh, God. <laughs> I almost have to start off from scratch. Turn the radio on... Uh, is that just... Yeah, okay, so there. Just hit the 5S. Um, if you want to go into memory scan, and you hit 8M, the M for memory, and then memory scan. Or scan. Or did I... Uh, ah, that's right. I turned it off, it lost its memory. i got to re-enter the channels. So, let me start from scratch. 8M, channel, 12, channel, 8M, channel, 17, channel... 8M channel, 19 channel, so they should now be stored into memory, so if I hit 8M scan, or, okay, so there you can see the scan, the normal memory channels, <clears throat> and then, uh, and it also has priority, alternate channel operation, I'm looking at the service manual here, instant channel 9 access, so yeah, I guess that's the 9, yeah, so you hit the 9, it goes into so that should be normal, yeah. And for normal, and then you can scan through all the channels. But like I say, for its, you know, back in the day, um, that was, or this was, you know, a high-end piece of equipment. Um, another kind of nice feature they have on this is a an adjustable noise limiter. So it has a noise blanker switch, but it has a noise limiter. Currently, eh, let me turn it. You can turn it off. Or it's adjustable. So that's kind of like uh, some of the Motorola radios. They had adjustable noise limiters, which is nice. Um, and some, actually, some early tube radios had that as well. But, uh, yeah, so the adjustable noise limiter is nice. Um, let me turn the squelch down here. And then if you want to just scroll through the channels, because like I say, there's no channel selector, um, you can enter them man manually, or you can scan through them or you can use the other so these buttons are fast and these are slow so but uh, there you go there's an SBE Keycom 1000 back up and running uh, nice looking radio I'll turn it off because I don't think in person it looks really good but in the camera it looks like the light is kind of I'm kind of getting that bloom it's blinding the camera um, but yeah, nice little colored keypad there. Yeah, when it's on, you really, don't, in person, it's very noticeable, the different colors. But, uh, and it also has a dim switch here. 
Um, you can see it gets really, really dim. But if you turn all the, you know, if I turn all the lights off in the room, which would kind of simulate you driving down the road at night in a vehicle, it actually looks good. It's just just bright enough to where you can see it in in darkness. So that's you know, actually a good setting for a, a vehicle. But uh, yep, there you go. There's a rare SBE Keycom 1000.